Now, this all started around 10.30 this morning in San Bernardino North near towards the Barstone Sheriff Station. That's who originally responded to this call. Um, we've been watching just one driver, it appears to be inside, a man with a short sleeve white t-shirt as we zoom in again. And which is bizarre is, one, this is a semi-truck that's involved in a high-speed chase, uh, speeds reaching 70 miles per hour. Two, he's been able to communicate with CHP, and we are just assuming right now that it's likely over the radio that is often found inside uh, these vehicles. Same Saying, one, I don't want to go back to jail, according to our sources, which means he has some sort of criminal past. And two, he's told officers, I don't have any weapons inside. So at least from their standpoint, they've been backing off a little bit. Yeah, basically the company does transport hazardous materials, electronic waste, and sometimes radioactive waste. So, and with everything being said, You've got to take that into account where you don't want to force him to go at a very high rate of speed, lose control, and then cause a, you know, a hazmat type of incident. Is there a way to look at this semi the way it's driving and to figure out if it is empty or not? Um, you know, the only way to know that is to contact the company and find out what the trailer was hauling. But it looks like it was intact with the trailer and the cab, so it may be a full laden vehicle or it may be an empty vehicle, but the way it looks like it's driving, it looks like it does have some cargo. Oh man, and Bruce, but you, you've also been able to watch it this way that this is this truck has been moving and it's your belief that this driver has some experience behind the wheel of a semi? Uh, Officer Alvarez? Yes. Oh, yes, we have you online. So we are watching the situation take over with this uh, semi truck. Uh, now, what's, uh, what's, what do you do in this case? What, what's the best tactic, safest tactic uh, for this situation right now? Well, we hope that uh, the safest resolution would be that the gentleman pulled over and, uh, you know, doesn't, hopefully does not have any weapons and just surrenders on his own. It's what we're ultimately what we'd like for him to do. Well, tell us what you know about this driver. We understand there's been some communication with a relative. Uh, can you can you go into any more detail about what you know about the driver? I can't I can't confirm any of that information right now. We just know that the trailer was stolen, reported stolen this morning. Um, a sheriff's deputy uh, located it and then requested us to take over once the uh, vehicle was on the freeway, and that's when we initiated the pursuit. That it, started about 10 30 this morning we're following right now and uh, they've left messages have not been able to reach anyone there officer alvarez from the chp told us they're just not sure what is being transported in this truck yeah they were saying that this was sto this truck was stolen this morning um, a sheriff deputy located it and requested chp assistance and that's when uh, they got involved in this pursuit here as we are watching uh, this closely, there, there's that truck there, uh, Megan Reyes overhead, uh, still going eastbound on the 10, right, Megan? Yes, and I wanted to show you that was a CHP uh, airplane. We don't see mm. that too often in LA, uh, LA city limits. They do have helicopters, but they are a great asset. The pilots are outstanding flying those airplanes, assisting those ground units. We're on the eastbound side of the Interstate 10. Oh, we're just passing the outlet. So if you're familiar with this area, that's going to put us about four miles outside of Highway 111. So already I can see the city limits of Palm Springs. Uh, no doubt Palm Springs may already be aware. Listen, there might be a pursuit coming into your jurisdiction. Cap is on right now, passing Morongo Trail. For many of our viewers, this is where they get off to go to the outlet stores here. Um, the Morongo Casino is right here, that big 20-plus uh, story tall hotel that you pass on the 10 freeway. This is also the part of the desert where you have the two dinosaurs. You have the Brontosaurus and the Tyrannosaurus Rex that are big tourist attractions here. And this is officially the desert. Uh, we've let, we're going through the Banning Pass, and now there aren't many exits at this point. Uh, and there's a uh, slight um, downhill uh, before we get to a rest stop another 5, 10 miles out. And then the incline uh, as we approach an area known as the Whitewater Pass. And then from there, that's where we see all of the big uh, windmills uh, that create power. And you have down a pretty big uh, decline as you approach the Palm Springs area. We're getting 
farther behind this pursuit. Because yeah, right now we're going to give you our update here before we lose our signal. Uh, the speed rig actually turned on the 62 heading up towards the Yucca Valley area. So we're off the Interstate 10, two-lane highway heading up to the 62 area. Uh, quite a, 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 a desolate area, just uh, two lanes heading up into this area. Um, I can tell you the CHP airplane is trying to communicate to the drivers. We pull out, you can see more of the shot right here. There's a CHP airplane. He, right there, this guy is trying to communicate via two-way to the driver, telling him to pull over, but so far no response. That CHP airplane right there is calling down the position to those units there. These are CHP officers out of the Indio office. So uh, this big rig off Interstate 10 heading up to the 62 now up toward Yucca Valley, and we're going to have a pretty steep incline here coming up shortly. We may be in and out of our signals depending on the altitude for News Chopper 4, but we are following this pursuit, and so far we haven't seen any accidents or any high speeds going about 60 to 75 miles per hour, but I imagine those, those speeds are going to definitely decrease as we have a steep incline coming up here shortly. Uh, looks like people are waving to him, cheering him on a little bit. Up, oh, he's making a move here. Let's see what he's going to do. Making a left turn or a U-turn. Looks like he's going to make a U-turn. Deciding to go back westbound now on, uh, on Highway 62. Let's see, uh, let's see what he does here. He's going to continue on. That's what it appears. So he is now going to backtrack. There's more people and kind of back off. Not really a wise idea to do during a pursuit, even though this one, uh, although big, big rig, rather benign, you know, in terms of uh, what we've been hearing. He, the, the driver's been communicating with officers and what we've seen, just uh, not this real intense uh, type of situation that we've seen with so many high-speed pursuits it's it's been at the speed limit uh, we haven't seen this uh, this big rig uh, drive uh, much faster than maybe 60 65 miles an hour down uh, an open stretch of freeway here 